Hi, in this video I would like to explain the concept of friction and frictional forces. Friction is a phenomenon which opposes motion and it always acts in the interface between two surfaces. So here you see a mass sitting on a horizontal plane which is yellow and white in color. The friction occurs in the surface where they interact. So it's between the bottom of that blue mass and the top of that yellow and white plane. So the forces act all over that interfacing surfaces. One of the important things to note here is a normal reaction. And friction is always tagged to the normal reaction. So since it's a horizontal plane, the weight is acting vertically downwards and the plane is pushing up on the block vertically upwards. That's why here you see that the normal reaction is also vertically upwards and is equal to mg. On an inclined plane, the mass will be sitting in an inclined manner and the normal reaction will not be equal to mg. Now let's look at an animation. The block is not moving, it's vertically in equilibrium. You put a force and it has to overcome static friction first before it starts moving. So it's stationary for some time, then it starts moving. Once it starts moving, the static friction force is replaced by a kinetic friction force. So it's called the coefficient of kinetic friction. And all those red arrows there represent the frictional forces which oppose the forward motion. Let's look at the animation once again. Initially the block is stationary, no forward force. Then you apply a forward force, it has to overcome static friction first. And static friction also opposes even starting of the motion. But once the mass starts moving, static friction says, hey, I can't do anything now. So kinetic friction takes over and still continues to oppose the motion. So friction plays a very key part in motion. Now let's look at a still image and consider all the cases that can happen. Ultimately, at the end of the day, we are interested in the resultant force that's acting on the mass. And we want to know whether the mass is moving forward, moving backwards, or moving with a constant velocity, etc. So all you have to do is to draw a free body diagram and find out the resultant force. Vertically, the free body diagram shows us that n is equal to mg in this case, so the block is not moving up and down it's in equilibrium in the vertical direction. In the forward direction, if the force F is greater than the force of static friction, then the block will start moving forward and it will have a net acceleration in the forward direction because the resultant will be equal to F minus the force of static friction. And resultant force is equal to mass into acceleration, so the mass will have an acceleration. Once the mass starts moving, static friction is out of the picture, kinetic friction comes into play and then we have to find the resultant of the forward force F minus the force of kinetic friction. It's like starting a bicycle, initially it's difficult and once the bicycle starts it's easier to pedal it and that's because the kinetic friction is much less than the static friction always. Now if the forward force is equal to the dragging force of kinetic friction after we start the bicycle then it means that the bicycle doesn't have any resultant force in the forward direction. In this case if it happens to this mass then if there is no resultant force the mass will simply continue moving with a constant velocity provided that the forward force is exactly equal to the backward dragging force. The third case is if the forward force is less than the backwards dragging force of kinetic friction. Then, very simply, the resultant force will be in the backward direction. And that means that the mass that is moving forward will experience a backward force, so slowly it will come to a stop because, again, F is equal to M into A and A is negative, so it will have a retardation. Retardation means that the block will come to a standstill. So these are the ways in which we find the resultant force and we can talk about what's happening to the block. I hope uh, this was useful to you. Thank you and bye-bye.